Hey guys, what's going on? Tour crews here checking in with... Good we're here with Tunchan and we're doing a nice long city ride here in Nagoya, Japan. So we're going to be doing a full uncut long ride back home to Nagakute for us. And we're going to be taking some new roads today. We're actually on the north side of Nagoya city. We've been running some different errors around here in the city. And we wanted to just sort of explore, go on some random roads. We know the general direction we need to go. We need to go east and a little bit north. So we're just going to be riding that way. And so join along on today's ride. If you have a bike, you're riding along indoors, that's great. And we'll be talking about whatever we see along the way. We're testing out our new folding bikes right now. We're doing our longest ride today. I think we're getting about 30, maybe up to 40 kilometers today. Not sure exactly. Oh man, this is the, the tough thing about taking random roads is you end up somewhere random and I thought we could go straight here, but we can't. We got this weird spiral. That's right, we'll make our way around and hopefully find some cool new little secret spots. Oh, let's go up. Tone's a little tired. Yeah. We've been out all day. We cycled here in the crazy heat and we did a live stream. We did some more cycling. We walked around a lot. We ate a lot. So Tuing is like a baked potato right now. Oh wow, check this out. This looks like a maybe entrance ramp to the highway. Okay, so lesson learned. I often get asked on the channel like how I know all these different roads and stuff. And it's a lot of trial and error. Like sometimes there's some roads that become dead ends or you find out you're going the wrong way. So there's a lot of that, but that's half of the fun. Yeah, we wanna keep going east. I wish I had a compass on my bike right now. I need to get a mount or get my cycle computer on this folding bike right now. We don't have anything. Oh, here we go. We got a nice little canal. Let's show you guys this real quick. We don't get to see too many of these here in Nagoya. Lots of these over in Osaka though. Oh wow, there's lots of, it looks like there's like raindrops in the water or maybe that's little fish coming up to eat something because there's no water right now. But yeah, it doesn't look very clean down there. No one's walking down there, but it looks like you can. Eat the meter? Yes. Okay, let's go. It looks like we can go down this way. So let's go check it out. I have a feeling we're not going to be able to do much riding down here. <laughs> but that's okay. We're just out enjoying today. Boken ride, adventure ride. Here we are. No fish. This is a good fishing spot for Tunchan, maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't want to eat any fish from here. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue. 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 Hmm. Oh, this will be nice if we if we can continue going on underneath these bridges. I have a little hunch though that we're not going to be able to continue like this. We'll see though, I could be pleasantly surprised. I really hope we can find another ramp to go up though. I don't want to have to carry this bike upstairs. Oh wow, there's just giant holes right here. Be careful, don't run into that. Interesting. No one down here. 
we got a staircase right there. No, good thing we got our fenders. Oh, it does not smell good down here. It smells pretty nasty. Anyway, <laughs> Okay, we got another staircase. Oh yeah, these fenders are protecting us. That's awesome. I've had like little fender sets, like the ones that you clip on your other bikes, but nothing like these. These are like dedicated fender sets, so they cover the whole part of the wheel. That's awesome. I didn't get any spray up from the... Oh, Tung sees lots of fish. <laughs> Okay, I think we're reaching the dead end here. This is as far as we go. You saw some fish? Yeah. Yeah. Many fish. Many big fish. Many big fish. Cannot eat. <laughs> Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see that, but there are a bunch of giant fish down there just lurking out here in the, the shade. Oh my goodness, they're huge. Okay, we found the ultimate fishing spot here. <laughs> Fish video. Let's go fishing. Not here. No, thank you. These bikes are pretty light though, only like 13 kilograms. So not a problem to carry them for a little bit. I have no idea where we are. Where are you going? Where are you going? I think we want to head up to this river here because I know that path. Once we get on that river, we can go back home easily. Oh, bike Okay, so we're gonna branch off of that little river there. That one goes straight up north. We wanna go a little bit east here. So we're gonna turn right, and that way we don't waste our just going out of our way a little bit. It looks like there's a nice little cycle lane here on this path, by the way. So we should have some smooth sailing. We've got some shade here. Tung really likes the shade right now after just roasting all day. Some cute little dogs there. Oh wow, check out those lights. Man, that guy's sprinting up towards that red light. Same with that guy, jeez. I don't know why people are in a rush to stop. But so far on our test today, like we've been testing these bikes on different roads, on the main roads, on the bike pass, on these like sort of pedestrian pass. And so far, we're really liking them. They're really comfy. They don't slow us down too much. And the nice thing with my bike is it has a luggage rack so I can store some stuff in there. We did a little conveni break. We got some snacks there. So I didn't want to start the video like that. So I'll be showing that midway through the, the video, even though it's a little bit out of order. But that's okay. We got some uh, family chicken sandwich and we got some sports drink and some Deca Vida C classic combo. One of our favorites at Family Mart, which is one of our favorite convenience stores here 
in Japan. Okay, so we are still riding along the, the subway line here. This is a subway line we never take. Actually, we rarely ride the trains. I think it's been over a year since I've been on a train here in Japan. And I think Tung's only gone like once or twice this year. She recently went to Osaka and Kyoto to film some videos. So she took the trains then, but that's about it. Check out all this bicycle parking here. So this is paid if you're here like a short time. If you're here like a short time, like an hour, you don't have to pay anything. Um, but I think it's usually like 24 hours, like 100 yen or something. It's not too bad. But we generally try to find like cheap or free places to park if we can. Chun-chan's loving the new bikes though. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Pretty busy area over here. Good thing we brought our lights. We weren't sure how late we were gonna be out today, but the sun is setting pretty early here. You gotta be careful about people like that. They, they just come onto the road and turn without even looking to see oncoming traffic. There's lots and lots of people like that here, uh, both children and older people. So always be careful when you're at an intersection, someone, <laughs> will just be coming right in there without even looking and braking. Always best to be careful. Okay, it looks like we're still gonna be on this busy road for a little bit, uh, but we're getting close to the, but we're getting close to my old river that I used to commute on, which has a nice big cycle lane, and no one's on it, so we'll be there pretty soon, I think. Togokusan Fruit Park. Yeah, that's 15 kilometers away. Wow, I'm surprised they have a sign for that over here. And we actually ride by that area quite a bit. Oh, another big intersection here. Okay, it looks like it's about six o'clock right now. So as you can see, six o'clock and already starting to uh, get the sunset, getting a little darker here. We're getting pretty close to the river. I think we're going to zigzag our way over there. Or actually, we could go straight 
and go by the Nagoya Dome and show you guys that first. I think we'll do that. We'll show you guys Nagoya Dome. We'll go straight that way. No me? No me. Okay, actually, let's take a quick break. We are going to do a snack break at a convenience store. So we're going to take a quick break. Be right back here on the road. Okay, here we are taking a quick little lunch break. We stopped by a Family Mart convenience store. We got Toonchan's favorite bummy tiki. And I think the family tiki is a little bit larger now for their like anniversary or something. So we're doing our custom fami chiki sandwich. <laughs> and it's been a really hot day. We've been burning a lot of calories out, riding around town, walking around town, live streaming, doing everything. Uh, so Tunchan is ready for some food. We also got some snacks here, some drinks, some Pokari Sweat sports drink, and also Decavita C. Kind of like a mini energy drink, but it also like replenishes like the salt that you lose and has some vitamin C. So it's kind of a weird mix. Um, anyway, itadakimasu. Uh, she's also going to make my chicken sandwich. So normally they have a specialty bun for this, but they were sold out unfortunately. So we had to buy this extra bread here, which luckily they only had a three slice for about a hundred yen. So it wasn't too bad. So I'm getting the double slice sandwich. Tuing's getting the half slice. She doesn't want that much bread. But the bikes are doing a pro job on today's ride. This basket is actually really useful. We were able to store like all of our, our snacks in there when we rode from the convenience store to this little break area. So really convenient to have. Okay, itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Tunchan loves her meat. Warukunai. Okay, we're gonna finish up our break here. We'll see you guys back on the road in just a sec. All right, here we are continuing our ride. Actually, that snack break was filmed right before our ride, but I didn't want to start the video with us just eating. I thought it would be better to leave it in the middle. So sorry about that, things are out of order, but it makes more sense from the video perspective. So we're fueled up, we've got our family chicken, <laughs> we've got our sports drink, and we are powered up, ready to finish our ride home. Before, before that, we were just dying though, like crazy hot, walking around outside all day and just getting baked in the sun. Oh wow, there's lots of cool little shops over here. Pretty busy area. We don't come over this way, like, ever. At least I don't. Oh, here we go. We got a little Brompton. Now that we're riding Dahon bikes, we got a route for Team Dahon, not Team Brompton. I will say though, like, yeah, Brompton folds down really small, really compact, it's really easy to travel with, but the ride feel of these bikes is just really nice. Like, it feels like a full-size bike, even though um, it's like a quarter of the price. Like, I think most Bromptons here start at about like $2,000 in Japan. Uh, these bikes are about $500 that we're on right now, so a lot cheaper. And yeah, they still fold down decently small. So here we are at, what is this? Ozone Station. And this is where the Nagoya Stadium is, or Nagoya Dome is. That's where they have a lot of sports events or like concert events. I don't think you can really see it from here though, because we're like down on the ground and surrounded by buildings. That's too bad. I think I've only ever like saw one event there, and that was like a baseball game, a Nagoya like home game. Yeah, Tung and I never came here together, unfortunately. But it's pretty busy over here. They have like a whole bunch of different shopping malls. So here we got an Edion electronic store and different like shopping malls around this area. Lots of people out anyway. Oh, she's got the umbrella attached to her bike. That's the way to do it on these hot days. Just ride with a nice sun umbrella attached. As long as it's not too windy, you can get away with it. Okay, we can see a sneak peek of the dome off there in the distance, if you can see that from here. 
We'll try and get a little bit closer so we can hopefully see it. Yeah, this is a pretty big intersection. So we've got what? One direction, two, one, two, three, four, five, five different splits in this one. So it's kind of one of those awkward ones where you have an extra light, extra direction. Uh, but the river, we're going there afterwards is right over there. So first we're gonna ride over this way, check out the dome, see how close we can get, see if we can get any nice views. And then we'll head over to the safe river. If we can get away from all this traffic and congestion. So another thing that Nagoya is famous for is like coffee shops or cafes. They have a morning set. Um, and that's what this is kind of like. This is a Hoshino coffee. I think this is based from here. And they have some really nice sweets, really nice coffee, really nice morning set. I've never gone there actually. I really need to go. There's a lot of things we gotta do before we leave and experience. So let us know if you've been to Hoshino Coffee before and we'll have to do a bike and eat video there one day if we can get up early enough to get the morning set. Loving these shade roads right now though. Yeah, if we were on the river path right now, there's no canopy. We would just be roasting in the sunlight. Oh, let's see. I see the dome over here. Let's, let's see how close we can get and what other surprises we can find. Here's a little park. Nothing special. Lots of people out now though, still on summer vacation. So this is basically what I have in mind for like using these bikes in the future. If we're visiting some other countries like Thailand, Indonesia, uh, for our plans moving forward, we're just gonna possibly be there for a couple weeks or maybe even a few months, depending on the, the COVID situation and how everything goes. But yeah, we'll just be doing some exploration rides like this, going around, checking out the cities, uh, not just the tourist spots, but just like different places in general. We like just exploring random roads it doesn't have to be a tourist spot. But so far these bikes seem to be doing a great job for this kind of casual riding. Here we are. They've got an overpass over here so you can walk over and get to the dome. It's starting to get a little bit darker over here but you can see the dome over here. Well, here we go, we got a decent view. Better than nothing. I think they're still holding like baseball games and stuff like that normally right now. I'm not sure, I'm not too into that personally though. Okay, and we've got another shopping mall here. Look at all these bikes just parked out here this giant shopping mall. So it looks like there's a lot of things that we can do around here. So I think we're just gonna keep randomly going this way until we can find our way back to the river. There are some people out in like baseball jerseys though. So I wonder if there's like an event nearby or something. But not too many people, so I don't know, it's hard to imagine. Maybe it's an away game, they're coming here in spirit. But wow, this area is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever been here really, just like cycling through it this time of day. There's lots of people out, just enjoying. Oh, we got a nice view of the dome from over here as well. Nagoya, dome. 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 Dome, what do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any 
Okay, never mind. Man, Tunchan, she doesn't even know her own language. But it's also because she doesn't have like those kinds of experiences very much. Okay, here we are. We're gonna circle around the dome. We're gonna get it from all the angles. You can find the best view without going in. Lots of bike parking though, so big bonus points for that. Oh yeah. Yeah, we should probably go down on the main road. Oh man, that guy, he's got his Uber Eats bag. He's got his sanitization on the side pouch. Let's drop down. We'll follow that guy. Or not, he's turning right. Yeah, this is a lot smoother. These bikes can get some decent speed though. Let's, let's try picking it up. It is a little bit limiting with the, the six speed though. At least on like the flats and slight downhills, like I do notice if I try and like push like a big gear, I run out of gear pretty quickly. That's something we can fix with an upgrade though, if we need to. Check out that cool little like monkey bar set. Most of the Japanese parks here, like they have the same few little attractions, like maybe like a pull-up bar, maybe a swing, maybe a slide. That's about it. But every once in a while, like you come across a park that just has a random attraction you've never seen before. I really like seeing those <laughs> and just coming across nice surprises like that. There's a fancy little restaurant right there. Some outdoor dining. You don't see that in Japan very often. Let's sneak by these guys. That's the nice thing about these little city bikes. You can go anywhere. They're all going right. So we're gonna do the opposite. <laughs> we'll go left. My river sense is telling me the river is this direction. Hopefully we're right. So yeah, not only the trains, but also the buses. Like we haven't ridden a bus in over a year. There's lots of buses here in Japan. We're passing by lots of bus stops right now. Like some people do that as part of their regular daily commute, but no way, not for us. For us, it's bikes or nothing. The Super Sports. We got an Eon here, Victoria Golf, Max Value. I like the Super Sports though. That's a pretty cool name. What's this? Some school. And we got an overpass here, but unfortunately, oh, they don't have a, a bike lane, so we're gonna have to cross this way. That's okay. So technically we can't cross here. We gotta cross here and then cross again. That's okay. We need to keep going east anyway. That's too bad. They have the pedestrian ramp, but they don't have the bike ramp here. Okay. Well, we got some subway lines over here as well. This is honestly like, we never come this way. <laughs> we are usually, we sort of have the bad habit now, like where we, we know certain routes, we know some of like the best routes and we just always take those routes. So we haven't done too many like exploration rides lately. So that's why I'm pretty excited about today's ride. We're able to test out some new 
routes, <laughs> see some giant weird fish. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I don't think, okay, so that path goes up there. I have a feeling that path is gonna cross the river that we wanna get on. So we wanna stay down here, I hope. <laughs> I'm taking a gamble right now. Ooh, pretty dark down here. Spooky. Sometimes it's really hard to find access points to the river. Oh, here we go, maybe. Yeah, I can't ride this one. This one's a little steep. Oh my god. Oh. How she did her? <laughs> oh yeah, this one has a light up here so we can cross the the river road safely. I cannot. Okay, so I was wrong with the gamble. We could have took the ramp up here. I forgot there's this other sort of like little highway path above the side of the river and um, I really don't like this road. It's really narrow and lots of cars just speed on it because there's no traffic lights. So all the other roads over there, there's like a traffic light every like 200 meters. But here, you can go a couple kilometers without any traffic lights. So cars just speed on it like crazy, but I think we just gotta be on here for a few meters and then we can drop down into the safe river path. Okay, so here we are on the upper part of the river path. But it looks like we got an entrance point into the lower part right here. And this river path, you can see, just lined with these giant apartments. Actually, I almost moved into one of these apartments a few years ago. Here we go. Let's get off here, because there's some cars like that that just want to speed by. Yeah, way too many cars for my liking on that road. But here we go. We got a nice, smooth path home from here. So old fans of the channel will recognize this path instantly. This is my old bike commuting path when I used to commute like 40 kilometers every day. Back to work into the city. This is the best highway into the city, but it does sort of outskirt the city a little bit. So you do add some distance going around. But that's okay, we're pretty much close to our home on the way back, so we're not going out of our way anymore. And we got our highway. Highway home. Let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go home. Is Tunchan hungry? Yeah. Yeah, eh, mata. Oh man, she's hungry quickly, even though we just had that chicken sandwich. <laughs> Uh, hayaina. We've also gotten a lot of questions like, are there lots of bugs in Japan? And when you're in the city, like there's not too many bugs, honestly. Um, but when you're in like the more nature, like in this area, there's a lot more bugs in the evening. Like we're running into a few of them right now. But yeah, testing these bikes out on the city roads. And now we're on like the flat, super open bike path. We're holding a decent pace right now. We don't have to put out too much effort. I think these bikes are it for the touring bikes. These are doing an awesome stellar job. 20 inch wheels. Koichi tencha zenzen hayai na. Road bike iranai. Ma, yama no botera yama. Karui road bike hoshi ikeru. Alright, we were sort of on the fence like do we bring some road bikes on our trip and just like suck it up try and bring the big box on the airplanes or do we bring some folding bikes like this and yeah it looks like this is the way to go especially if we get some extra like racks on here like if we get a rear rack and we can put some panniers on here or try some bike packing bags so we can carry some more luggage. Man, I'm excited.
So it's starting to get pretty dark out here, but this camera does a phenomenal job with the low light filming. It has its own mechanical gimbal, so it's not relying on electric st stimulation. But the GoPros, for example, their stabilization is amazing in the bright light, but once you get in the dark like this, electric stabilization just goes to crap. So yeah, this camera doing an amazing job. We got some baseball going on down there. Always events going on over in these parks. This is where all the action is here in Japan on the river pass. And I didn't know about this like until like a few years living here. I had no idea about these pass about like this great area for riding this great place like with all this grass and fields that you can go hang out in. I literally had no idea. I think like my first two years or so. And then one day I decided to just come out this direction. I randomly came across this path and my whole world's changed. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. And coincidentally, a few years later, my new job that I got, the company I worked for, uh, ended up being along this path, like more towards the city. So it became my future bike commuting path. And I was commuting on this path about 20 kilometers one way each day. So yeah, love these exploration rides. You never know what you're gonna find next. You could have this like awesome facility or awesome like thing just nearby you and you had no idea. So good to get out of your comfort zone. Good to check out some new places. Uh, Tung's gonna ride it. So how do these bikes handle on the dirt? We haven't done a dirt test yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. That handled the dirt test, no problem. Oh, Zen Zen Monday Nine. Yeah, these have wider tires. Yeah. So even though the wheel's smaller, they're a lot more comfortable than like a skinny road tire. We don't ride too skinny of road tires. Our road tires are 25s, but actually we do want to switch to 28. So like if we were about to do our next tire upgrade, we probably would switch to 28 tires, um, possibly even 32s if our frames are big enough. Like I would do that on my cyclocross bike because it'll fit the 32 tires. But yeah, bigger's better, man. Unless you're racing and you're really competitive, like go for the comfort, definitely. And yeah, these wide tires, they really compensate for just the smaller wheel size and absorbing those bumps. We haven't felt like really any discomfort on these bikes, which I'm really surprised. <laughs> now the biggest test is just like, how durable are these? Like some of the parts we're probably gonna wanna replace, get some more solid puncture proof tires, maybe some Schwalbe marathons or something. And we'll see how long some of the other components work before we have to upgrade them, but we are excited. I think we're gonna continue on with these bikes, upgrade some of the parts so that we can use these bikes longer. These frames are really solid for the kind of riding we want to do in the future. And here we go. Some of the night lights are starting to turn on. I think this camera, it shows things a little bit brighter than it is right now. We have it on auto ISO, so we may have to decrease the max ISO so that it looks a little bit more natural, but if we do that, it gets really dark really quickly. So I don't know. Let us know what you think. Do you like the current settings of the camera? Is the brightness a little too bright or is it a little unnatural with this brightness? We can maybe try lowering the ISO a little bit to get a more realistic image. Hey, look at Two and forgot the shortcut. All right, it's getting dark enough to turn on the lights. 
So we just switched on our lights for the rest of the ride home. Since we're off the river path, Twin's got her blinky light on. <laughs> Hope that's not too distracting in the video. Maybe we'll ride in front of her. Look at Migi. So yeah, this used to be where I ride home every day. And especially in the winter commute season, like anytime out of the summer, it was always dark when I leave work. So I would finish work around, I think 5.30 back then. And yeah, after around the fall time to the spring time, it would be like dark already. So I'd be commuting most of the year, like pretty dark in the morning and really dark at night. So I was always commuting on this path at night but I was never really able to film videos at that time because my GoPro couldn't film it very nicely. So I think this is my first time filming a night video here on this path. But yeah, this is really nostalgic for me. I used to do this every day. But yeah, this weather is awesome right now because it's just been roasting us all day. I've mentioned that so many times in the video, but, uh, but right now, like just because we experienced like that really hot weather, the sun just beating down on us right now as the temperature starts to cool down, it's still like 30 degrees out, but it feels really cool <laughs> right now in comparison. Oh man, two in standing. <laughs> it's really rare for her to stand on the bike. She's not so comfortable with it. But that's a good sign she's getting comfortable with these bikes. Starting to get really dark. Can you guys still see? Yeah, I don't know why the sky looks so bright in this camera. That's really weird. We gotta change the ISO settings on the next ride. We got a runner back here. That's gonna be one of our goals moving forward. I used to exercise every day. I used to be really big into like cycling and just racing and stuff like that. So I always was training for that purpose. But lately, like I haven't had any races I haven't had any really big long rides. I haven't had any like cycling tours. So I haven't had like a real motivation to stay in shape. Like, yeah, we ride our bikes a decent amount, but not anything in comparison to what we did in the past. So one of my goals once <laughs> I, at least moving forward, maybe we'll try and do this before I leave my job is we want to start working out again, like every day, maybe at least like five days a week. It'd be nice if we could do it every day though just maintain a good fitness schedule a good routine that's the important thing i think not just doing it randomly but making it a daily part of your routine there we go we got the light on full power this one's about like 800 lumens i think my other light, we've got a 1600 lumen light. That one's a lot brighter. Twice as powerful as this one. But this one still does a decent job, I think. There's a cat just hiding out underneath that car. I don't know, the guy's trying to get him out from under the car, waiting for the cat to come out. 
there's lots of cats along this street. I was always really careful when I was commuting because I didn't want one of them just pulling out in front of me in the darkness. There's one right there. Oh my goodness. It was just there on the left side. Did you see it? It's really dark though. Probably not. Yeah, there's just cats lying around everywhere <laughs> on the street. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, lots of, not just walkers, not just cyclists, um, but even just car drivers. They just bomb into turns. Don't even look, just go. <laughs> Full steam. I really like seeing all these people though walking their dogs. It's one thing I really miss about being back home or being in other countries is there's a lot more dogs, at least big dogs in other countries. Here in Japan, I feel like I'm a bit like deprived or have some like withdrawal symptoms of not seeing big dogs. Uh, Cause that's a big part of like me growing up. I saw dogs all the time. We always had big dogs in my family or with people nearby me at least. So one day we will have our own tuba cruise dog. We might have to get a small dog though so we can fit it in a basket and bring it in on our rides. Or maybe we can get a cool cat. A cat that likes riding and stuff like that. Let's get that. I really prefer dogs over cats, but from like a logical standpoint, like cats just make a lot more sense. There's a lot less maintenance. They're a lot more chill. They're a lot more independent. And I dare say, I hate to admit it, they resemble me a lot more than I resemble a, a dog, even though I, I love dogs a lot more. Let's ask Tunchan, which does she like more, dogs or cats? Dochi ga suki, wanchan ka neko. Which one do you like? Cats. You like cats? Yeah. Why? So I guess, yeah, they're just easier to have as a pet. Atun was telling me her family used to have some pets, but they weren't really pets, they were like employees. So Tung's family runs a, a pho restaurant in Vietnam. And so I think they used to have like a dog um, and a cat or multiple cats, but they didn't treat them as pets. They just treated them as like, I don't know, they shared the same living space with them. So the cats would like eat the, the mice and other things that were around. And then the dog would eat all like the garbage or leftover food on the ground. Uh, so <laughs> she had some pets before, but her family didn't consider them pets. I don't even think they had names. <laughs> If we got pets though, we wouldn't treat them that way. We'd, we'd treat them like, I don't know, current modern pet standards with love. And we'd love them a lot more if they also enjoyed cycling and they could come cycling with us. That'd be awesome. We'd love to just get a nice comfy basket, get a little cat that likes to come out for rides or a trail dog maybe. The trail dog's a lot more difficult, but that'd be so cool. Just like being able to go mountain biking and have the dog keep up with you. That's like the ultimate dream. All right, we're making our way towards our last stop. This is Fujikaoka Station. It's the last stop on the east side of Nagoya in the subway line. And we're climbing up a decent little hill right now. And yeah, this bike is performing like a champ. Let us know if you like these long style ride videos. <laughs> we're trying to film as much as we can now before we leave. We want to preserve as many of our memories here and show you guys as many of our favorite places to ride as we can. So we hope you enjoy. Don't forget the video uh, like before you leave. We're just going to pass through this last little section here before we finish up. So this is the station that we live closest to. There goes the train. 
Uh, perfect timing. Good way to end the video. So wow, oh wow, we've been filming over an hour continuously on this new camera. That's the other nice thing about this Pocket 2 is it has a pretty long battery life. We can film over an hour of 4K video easily. And it does really well in the night performance. Anyway though, we're gonna finish up this video here. So let us know what you guys think of the new camera. Let us know if you enjoyed today's ride. We'll leave the Strava link down below in case you wanna see that. Uh, yeah, this jerk is gonna cut us off like that. All right guys, we're almost home now. It's really dark now, we're getting hungry again. So we're gonna finish up this video here. A special thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to your guys' support, we're able to continue filming videos like these. And we hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to give the video a like before you leave. And we'll see you next time here on Tubal Cruise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.